This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, so let's start. So in the last uh, session, uh, we have started with the database programming <clears throat> and we understood that to interact with the databases, uh, we have two types of S uh, SQL statements, native SQL and what uh, open SQL. We have used one open SQL statement uh, called as select single. We use select single uh, statement whenever you want to read single record from the database table. And uh, whenever we use select single, it is recommended to compare with the primary key field of the table so that we can guarantee the retrieval of what uh, appropriate records. And we understood that if the select statement is successfully executed, size of RC will be set to zero. Otherwise, size of RC is set to what, uh, four. Okay. One second, uh, let me just ping for others. This conference will now be recorded. Okay. <clears throat> So let me open the test rest program. Just wait, let me connect to the server. So this is the yesterday's example, <coughs> right? So when I execute this, so we are retrieving the data from what uh, KN event table. So if you observe the KN event table, uh, this table contains some 251 fields. I'm using a different server. Yesterday, the server we used contains KN event table contains 215 fields. Now this server contains 251 fields. Done. And in the yesterday's server, we are having around 9,000 uh, test records. If you see this table, this has got around uh, 360 records. Okay, so when I execute this, it will show you the first 200 records. Okay, so one of the customers is what 1,010. Okay, 1,010. So when I execute this, I'll give 1010. When I fit, when I say I fit, I got customer phone, I got the data. Okay. So, what is the limitation with this approach? Uh, I declared some four fields. Okay. I declared four fields. And in the program itself, I mentioned the data type and what size. Okay. So, why I gave it as character of 10? Because this field is declared on behalf of which field? Customer number field of what? K11 table. So in the K11 table, customer number field is what? Character of what? 10. And land one is character of 3, name one is 35, and the city is also what? 35. So based on this information, we have created the fields with the corresponding data types and what? Size. Okay. So what is the disadvantage of this approach? If the database field properties are changed. If the database field properties are changed, means if the data type and size is changed, again, you have to modify your programs also. Okay, that is one disadvantage. So if you have written some thousand reports like this, in this approach, okay, if the database field properties are changed, I need to do the changes in what all the thousand reports, which will increase what? maintenance cost which will increase the maintenance cost okay that is one limitation another limitation is when i execute here i need to enter what customer number okay so as the end user i cannot remember all the customer numbers which are maintained in the system okay so we need to provide some f4 help kind of thing okay means when i press f4 here I should be able to see the list of all the customers which are available in the K11 table. So as of now, when I press F4 here, I am not getting any 
F or L. I am not getting an A4 value. So I need to manually provide the customer number and execute. Okay. So there are two limitations in this approach. The approach is the limitations are what? We are not getting any F or L by default. And another uh, limitation is if the database field properties are changed, I need to do the I need to do the corresponding changes. I need to do the corresponding changes in the what uh, program also. Okay, so in order to avoid these limitations, let us see what is the standard way of declaring. I'll make a copy of this. This 36, I'll copy to 37. I'll copy this 36 to 37. Let me select all the checkboxes. Now, so instead of declaring like this, what I'll do now, let me make a comment of this. Right, so I'll say I require four fields referring to that particular table. So I'll say data F1. Okay, data F1 type. This F1 should refer to what field? Customer number field of what? KN1 table. So if you go to KN1 table, we have what custom number field. Okay, what is the data element of this field here? If you see the data element, data element is what? KUNNR. Okay, data element is KNR. We don't know what is data element, but understand like this. A data element is a database object which refers to the technical properties of the field. I repeat, data element is what? It is a dictionary object, database object, which refers to the, uh, which stores the data type and what? Size. So let me refer to the data element. What is the data element here? Customer number. So I'll say F1 type customer number. So what you have done here? instead of directly specifying the data type and size i have collected the data element from the table and i'm referring to what data element okay similarly you have to ask refer to the land one what is the data element of the land one land one underscore gp name one is what name one underscore gp what is zero is what what is zero one underscore gp so let me say f1 type what land one underscore what gp Landmark underscore GP F3 type what uh, name one underscore GP then F4 type name one underscore what sorry F4 type what is that ORT01 underscore GP so what I am doing here I am referring to what data elements okay program variables referring to what data elements these are data elements so see now when i execute this just try to understand when i execute <coughs> yeah when i say f8 now you can see here i'll put the cursor let me press f4 here i am not getting any F4L okay, but what is the one of the advantage of this approach here? I'm not directly hard coding the data type and what size means if the database field properties are modified if these data types are changed Okay, if these data types are changed. I need not modify my program because the data element would remain what same if the data element is changed Yes, you need to modify the data element here Okay, so this is one of the recommended way, one of the recommended way for referring to the database fields. I can refer to data elements or 
or let me comment this program variables referring to what database fields program variables referring to database fields so what i'll do instead of referring to this uh, data element i need to refer to which field customer number now i need to refer to customer number which is part of which structure which table k naven so i'll say f1 type k naven hyphen what customer number table name hyphen field name the structure name hyphen field name then k naven hyphen what is the next field land one okay then here i'll say k naven hyphen name one k naven hyphen name one then the next field is what k naven hyphen ORT 01. So there are two ways. Either I can refer to the data elements or I can refer to the what? Or I can refer to the field itself directly. How do you refer to the field itself? The structure name iPhone field name, the database table name iPhone field name. Okay, now when I execute, when I execute, okay, so here I'll put the cursor, I'll press F4. Okay, I'll press F4. I'm not getting in what any F4L, but what is the advantage of this here? What is the advantage of this approach? Even if the database field properties are changed, if the data type is changed, or if the size is changed, or even if the data element is changed, also I need not do any changes in this particular program. Okay, so in some projects, depending on the project standards, depending on the project coding standards we need to develop the code in some projects uh, they might refer to our data elements or in some projects they may refer to our table name iphone what field name okay so these are the two recommended ways of referring to the database fields any questions here Now, there is another recommendation. Whenever your program variable, whenever your program variable has to refer to the database fields, it is recommended, okay, it is recommended to give the program variable name same as that of what database field name. Here, what are the program variable names I give? F1, F2, F3, F4. But what is the recommendation? This program variable names also it is recommended to provide the same name as that of what database field name so what i'll do instead of doing like this one second okay, instead of doing like this here instead of giving f1 what is the field name i'm referring to now so directly give the same name so that by looking at that field, I can understand that I'm referring to what customer number. It is only a recommendation. Okay. Whenever your variable has to refer to your database field, it is recommended to give the same name for the variable as that of the database field name. Name one. And this also I'll give it as what ORT zero. So now I need to do the necessary changes now. Since my program variable names are also same, what is the change I have to do in my this thing and here also instead of doing CST number, I'll say P underscore Kuna. So that by looking at this and here also I'll say instead of saying type of 10 uh, type C, I'll say type K never iPhone what Kuna. Understood? I'm referring to the database field itself and then I'm selecting all the four fields here instead of doing F1, F2, F3, F4. What are my program variable names? Same names, customer number land one what else name one and then what ORT zero where customer number equal to what is the input variable p underscore what customer number if size of rc equal to zero i'll just display this so here i'll say customer number 
and here I'll say what land one and here I'll say name one and here I'll say what ORT zero one done that's it okay let me save it check for the syntax no errors so when I execute okay yeah I'll press F4 here I'll press F4 now see the uh, advantage here earlier what I did instead of referring to the field here observe here instead of referring to the field yesterday what I did I said here here I said what parameters what p underscore kunnar of what 10 directly I'm art coding the data type and what size so when I execute here just for the when I execute I'm not getting any f4 help okay when I press f4 here I'm not getting anything but whereas here okay instead of giving okay, I gave what cst number now okay. instead of giving like this okay let me comment this or also parameters p underscore kunar type what k in one iphone what kunar so see the advantage you know i'm referring to what database okay here also one second one second plus here also i can refer to data element also parameters p underscore customer number type what is the data element of k customer number field kunar only so i can refer to what data element but what is the change I did? In some art coding the data type, I'm referring to the data element. So this is I'm referring to what data element. So when I execute, see now. When I say F8, then you are getting an icon here which indicates what it is having what F4. So when I press F4, yes, I'm getting the standard F4. Okay, so it is saying uh, search the customers by company code, search the customers in a general way. So when I continue, it is showing me what some columns, customer number, name one, city, all those things. So it is showing the list of what customers. Okay, it is showing how many customers is showing. I can filter it here. If I click on this, it is showing what up to five. Any of my table contains overall 360 records only. So it is showing all the records. Okay, so when I press F4, right? When I continue. Right, it is showing many columns, customer number, name one, city, postal code, all those things. Whatever I choose, even if I choose a name one, what is the corresponding customer number here? Uh, 140050. So when I choose any of the entry here in this line, what it is written? The corresponding customer number. So, okay, so if I'm referring to data element also, we are getting the F4L. And so or Let me check it done. Now, instead of referring to the data element, what I'm doing? I'm referring to what database field. So when I execute, yes, yeah, you know, when I say F4, done. I'll choose customers general. When I continue, done. I'll choose any of the line. I got the corresponding customer. So here also, I can refer to data element or I can refer to the table field. Understood? So why we are getting the F4L? If you see the K N one table for the field customer number, what is the data element customer number? If I double click on the data element, if I double click on the day, what is data element? We don't know, but for the time being, understand that data element is one of the database object. So if I navigate to the data element of Kunar at the data element level, if I go to further characteristics, you can see here there is something attached here. What is attached? Search help. Search help is nothing but what? f4 help search help is nothing but what f4 help so since search help is attached at what data element level we are getting the f4 help whenever you are referring to that particular field when you are referring to the field or when you are referring to the data element understood so this is another advantage of referring to the database field itself either to data element or to the field in sub art coding the type and size means if the search help is maintained at the database level at the data element level the same search help will be provided to our selection screen field also okay we are getting the icon when i press f4 i got the list of what uh, f4 values i can choose any of the entry 
I got the corresponding customer number. When I execute, I got the message customer found. I got the data. Done. So I'll just summarize. What is the change I have done from yesterday's approach? In yesterday's approach, I have directly hard coded the data type and what size. The disadvantage of that approach is what is the disadvantage? If the table field properties are modified, again I have to do the corresponding changes in the program also, which will increase what maintenance cost. Okay, so that is the reason. Instead of directly hard coding the data type and size, what is the recommendation? We can refer to the data element of the field or we can refer to the database field itself directly. Okay, so in either of the ways, what is the advantage? In, in future, if the database field properties are changed, if the data type and size are changed, you need not modify the corresponding declarations in the program. Another advantage is what? If the data element is associated with search help at the database level, the same search help will be associated to our program selection screen variable. That's it. Any questions in this, please ask me. Hope it's audible to everyone, right? Any questions, please ask me. So now I'll do the changes uh, further in the same program. So when I let me activate, when I execute, we are getting the F4 help. When I press F4, okay, this is a standard F4 help provided by you SAP itself. This is the standard F4 help provided by SAP itself. I'll do it. I'll not talk about F4 now because many of them are absent. Mm. Yeah, I'll do one thing now. Right, so this is what statement now? This is our open SQL. Select single comes under what? Open SQL. Now I'll do a small change. So why we have used select single? Because I am sure that we are going to get only one record. On what basis you can tell that we are going to get only one record? We are going to compare based on what? Primary key field now? So primary key field means what? You will not have duplicate entries. So I'm sure that I'll have only one record per customer. That's the reason I'm using what? Select single. And what is the approach I have followed here? Uh, I retrieved four fields. That's why I declared what? Four individual fields. So instead of storing in the four individual fields, what I'll do is I'll go for work area. So I'll keep this as it is. Let me do it from the beginning so 38 so again my agenda is what reading single record only type of program is what executable program i'll save it in the local object Done. so what is the requirement same thing i need to accept customer number from the user how do we accept by using parameters i'll say p underscore customer number type okay why I'm giving Kunar? Because I'm referring to what? I'm referring to database field. So since I'm referring to the database field, it is recommended to provide what similar name. So that's why I'm giving what copy underscore Kunar type. Either I can refer to what? Data element of the field. I can refer to data element of the field or I can refer to the Fill itself directly. So I'll say p underscore kunar type what k never hyphen kunar done. So what is the requirement now? Based on this customer number, I need to get the data. What data you want to get? Same four fields: customer number, land one, name one, and what the zero one. So in the earlier example, what I have done in the earlier example, I declared four individual fields. Instead of declaring those four fields, I'll go for work area. Work area also is a collection of fields only now. So what is the standard way of declaring the work area types? I'll say begin up some meaningful name algo. T Y underscore what customer? Okay. 
I need to refer to how many fields? Four fields. I'll say F1 type what? K never hyphen customer number. Next, what? F2 type. So instead of giving F1, F2, it is recommended to provide the same names. Huh? So I'll say Kunar. Okay, here also, also what? Land one. K never hyphen land one. Next, what else? Uh, sorry, name one. Type what? K never hyphen name one. And I'll declare another field. What is this? ORT01 type K never hyphen ORT01. So I'm going for what types declaration because what is the standard way of declaring the work area? First, you create the template. First, you create the types declaration with the required fields. Based on this, you create the work area. So let me create the work area. Work area generally will start with what? WA or LS or GS. Okay. So I'm going for sorry here. I'm going for W underscore customer W underscore customer type what K sorry type what is the type name T Y underscore customer. So based on the types declaration, I declared what work area done. Then I need to get the data now. So we are going to compare based on the primary key field. So you'll have only single record. So what I have to use select single. What are the fields you want to get from the table? Customer number, land one, name one, ORT01. Okay, from which table? K91 table into, into Esther. What I did, I since I retrieved four fields, I have transferred the data into what? four individual fields. Now, instead of transferring to individual fields, I'll say into W underscore what? Customer. Okay, this W underscore customer also contains how many fields? Four fields. Huh? The data types are same now because we are referring to the same fields. Okay, and rest of the thing is same. Where what customer number is equal to the input p underscore kuna. Then I'll say if if size of ours is equal to zero. Okay, I'll just say customer or this p underscore kuna. Customer p underscore kuna is what found. I'll just display the data customer number what is that where is the data available now what are the data you have retrieved the data will come and sit in the work area work area contains these four fields now. so let me refer to that what is this w underscore customer iphone what are the fields here kunar let me give let me reserve some width for them so i'll be 25 so that everything will be properly aligned. I'll check customer, what country. What is the field name? Second field, land one. I'm having cold, excuse me. Customer what name W underscore customer iPhone what name one then here I'll say customer iPhone what ORT zero one let me give meaningful description here customers you can give anything in the single course doesn't matter okay so when I exit yeah fine incorrect nesting before the end of the program the control structure introduced by if must be closed by what ended. So if the select is successfully executed, size of ours is what? Zero. Else, I'll just display the message saying that customer not found. Customer P underscore. I want to display the customer number. Not found. Customer is not found. End of for if is what? End if. Okay, so when I execute, let me give some customer here. Let I'm getting this customer which is available when I say F8. Yes, customer is what found. I got the customer number, customer city I got, customer name I got, Bangalore. Okay, let me try to print in the new line. So here I'll say. What is the error? It's 
this. When I execute, I'll get a customer number. Yes, I got the customer so on so is found. I got the data. Okay, now let me give something A140 10. When I say fit, select is what? Failed. I got the data. Customer so on so is what? Not found. So, what is the change? Instead of taking four individual fields, I took your work here. There is no advantage, disadvantage. I can go for the earlier approach or what? This approach. So, why I'm, why I'm showing this work here is since you are returning single record, work here is capable of storing what? Single record. And that record can contain any number of fields. Here we are having what? Four fields. So your work area also should contain what? Four fields with the same data types. In your the sequence is also what? Same. Any questions? So this is your uh, what open SQL select single comes under what open SQL now let me try to use native SQL so what do you mean by native SQL as I told you that every database vendor will provide their own set of what SQL statements every database vendor will provide their own set of SQL statements which can be used for communicating with their own databases okay Native SQL statements doesn't require any translation, doesn't require any conversion. So same example I want to do, but I want to use what? Native SQL. So select single comes under what? Open SQL. Let me check any documentation is available. I'll put the cursor and select single. I'll press F1. Yeah, when I press F1, so I can see related to the select class, we have many statements. So if I go to select single, yeah. The app specification select single makes a result set of a query of a single row set. The addition is possible with the standard and select statements also. Okay. Other things we'll discuss that later on. Yeah, that's all. Okay, so nothing more on this. Right. Now I want to achieve the same functionality, but I want to use what native. SQL. So let's see how to do the native SQL, native SQL statement. So let me create a new program. So generally in the projects, we will not use native SQL. Okay, we will be using what? Open SQL only. Right, so now same thing. I want to read what input customer number from the user. So I'll say parameters something p underscore kuna type. K never hyphen what kuna done then uh, then 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 what I'll do uh, let me take uh, let me take uh, what uh, 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 I'll take four individual fields first data okay I'll take four fields v underscore kuna type what is this field I want to refer K never hyphen kuna understood I'll take another field v underscore land one type k never hyphen what land one then v underscore name one type what k never hyphen name one then v underscore ort zero one type k never hyphen ort zero done so i declare what i declared four different individual fields now i have to use what native SQL statement so yesterday I believe I told native SQL statements are embedded between what execute SQL and end execute native SQL statements are embedded inside what execute SQL and what end execute so here I'll say execute SQL <laughs> Sorry. execute SQL and here I'll say end execute done. Now here I want to use a native SQL statement. So I can't use select single. Select single is a what? Open SQL statement. So select what are the fields you want to get from the table customer number. So, 
sorry. In the earlier example, we were using the in the earlier examples, we were using the open SQL select single. So in open SQL, the selection fields, the fields which are retrieving, they are separated with what space? They are separate with what space? Here I need to separate with what comma. Select customer number, land one, name one, and then what? ORD 01 from which table KN1 into into what are my target fields v underscore customer number comma v underscore land one and then v underscore name one v underscore what or t zero one where uh, what customer number equal to the input customer number which is p underscore what could not done so what is the change you have done here in native scale the fields are separated with what comma the selected fields the fields which are trying to retrieve by using select statement should be separated with what comma okay and native SQL statements should be embedded between what execute SQL and what end execute none then how do you check the execution status here if size of rc if size of rc is equal to zero okay i'll just give a message customer form i'll print it Let me copy it from the previous program. Okay, I'll just copy it from the previous program here. Say some words equal to zero. Control C. Then I just copy it. Okay, so. Oh, good. I got an error. I got an error here. When I do syntax, check, what is the error I got here? Into is not specified. Okay. Select so and so from K1 into not specified. OO context no longer supported. Okay. Saying that object or context no longer. So this is not recognizing. It seems that this syntax is invalid. Okay. If you see the earlier example, what you have done, select so and so into into only I use, but here it is not supporting. So I'll try to do small some changes. I'll just remove this from here. Okay, into instead of doing this parenthesis, I'll use this bind operator. Okay, binding into so and so. Let me check whether this is valid or not. Okay, I remove the parenthesis and I'm using this uh, binding operator. Let me check this syntax, save it, check it. Okay, I got it. Oh, I'm sorry. The field is one says unknown. It's not work area, no? it's an individual field. So what are the field names? V underscore what? Customer number. And then what? V underscore what? Land one. Then V underscore what? Name one. V underscore name one. And then what? V underscore what? ORT 0. So when I execute this, no error. So as of now, I don't have any syntax error. So what is the change uh, we have observed? We were trying to use native SQL statement and it should be embedded between what? Execute SQL and what? End execute. And then the select statement, the select statement, the fields should be separated with what? Comma. And before the target variable, you have to use this bind operator, colon. Okay, so let me check it now. Let me check whether I'll get any runtime errors. Okay, when I say F8. I said F8. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here I have to give the customer number. Let me give the customer number. I'll say F8. Ah. I got a runtime error. What is the error I got? SQL error occurred while executing what? Native SQL. So what is the error here? Error analysis. An exception has occurred, which is explained in more detail below. The exception, which is assigned to the class so and so, was not handled and therefore caused a runtime error. The reason for the exception is database error text. So 
where it is giving the error yeah it is giving the error in the select statement itself okay this is a statement it is leading to what runtime error so might be the syntax is wrong so i'll do one thing i'll do one thing let me go back to the program yeah in the program see the change 39 now. yeah the change i'll do is so far we are uh, what ending all the statement with period now this native sql statement i'll not give period at the end i'll not give period at the end and here also i'll use a bind operator so let me check whether this works or not save it check for the syntax no error done let me execute this i'll give the customer number f8 uh, i got the data i got the data understood so what is the problem with this approach i should know i should know what is the native sql statement what is the database here if i choose system status as soon as the database in my sql here the database is what hdb ana database so in ana database this is the syntax you have to follow okay so what is the problem here the developer should know the native sql statements of what that particular database so in future my customer will change from ana database to some other database so again uh, the ABAP consultant should know the syntax of that particular native SQL statement related to that database, so which is very difficult. Okay, so the uh, it is uh, not possible for all the ABAP consultant to know the native SQL statements of each and every database. That's the reason it is always recommended to go for what open SQL only. Make clear, right? I'll not use a colon and let me check whether this is mandatory or not. I'm not using the columns. Let's see whether I'll get any errors. Okay, and you should not end with period it seems. Save it, check it. No, okay. I got an error. So here only I'm getting the error. So compulsory, I need to use this bind operator. Once again. Okay, so let me use the bind operator here. Once I let me switch on the charging. Okay, done. No, I'm not giving the bind operator here. I don't know whether this is mandatory or not. Let me check it. Save, check, no syntax error, done. Let me execute. I'll give something 10 when I execute. No, I got the error. Where I got the error, you see? Good. Error has occurred on the current database connection, so on so. Database error text, invalid column name, p underscore kunnar. It is unable to recognize the p underscore kunnar. So I must prefix that with what? Bind operator, column. I need to prefix with what? Bind operator. And you should not give period. Okay? So the problem with native SQL is, yes, performance-wise, it is faster than open SQL. But the problem is, ABAP consultant should have the knowledge on that particular native SQL statements of that particular database, which is very difficult. In future, if the database is changed, I need to modify all the programs corresponding to the native SQL statements of the current database. Okay, that's the reason we'll always go for open SQL. Any questions, please ask me. Hope it's clear. Any questions? That so uh, I'll stop it for today because I don't want to what, start the new thing because based on that one only the rest of the classes are dependent. So I'll take the next section on what Monday and before I wind up once again, let me communicate already. I think I communicated uh, yesterday. We are starting two new batches. Okay, we are starting two new batches. One is what Oops about. This is both classroom and online. 
okay oops about classroom and online okay this we are starting from the 20th august this is from what time 9 to 10 yeah, 9 to 10 a.m okay and on the same day we are starting the cross apps also this is only classroom okay you will not have any online training for this only classroom this is on what same day 20th august okay this is from 10 30 to 11 30 is the scheduled time 10 30 to 11 30 a.m okay so 30 IST, right? sorry 10 30 ist right yeah, I used to be, but uh, Rajesh, this is only classroom Rajesh, not online. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so that's the reason I'm not specifying to you. So this batch, I'm starting uh, for a group of some 10 to 12 students, okay? And, uh, right, so if anyone interested in the classroom training, they can come for cross apps also. Otherwise, okay, if you are interested only in online, for the time being, you can continue with what? Oops, about, which is starting on what? Monday. Cross apps online also will start, but in the next month, in the next month, and that would be most only in the core of app slot that is at the timing 6 30 slot. So, once I complete majority of the core of app in the same time slot, I'll try to start what cross app. So, at that time, you can attend Rajesh and others if you're interested in the online. Okay, but those who want to attend Oops of app uh, parallelly, they can start attending from Monday, which is both classroom and what online. Right, so this is the information. <clears throat> so Rajesh, as of now, you focus only on uh, UI5, okay? UI5, so once I complete majority of the Koreba, we can not uh, cross up later. On. Then, and those who want to attend Oops app online, from Monday, you send a test mail to me, or you can send a test mail to the office ID uh, from where you are getting the emails related to the new batches. Okay, you can send a test mail to me or to the office ID so that uh, they'll add it in the list. Okay, right. So I'll wind up for today. We'll continue with our core app on Monday at 6:30, UI5 at uh, 7:45, and uh, Oops app at 9 o'clock. And the cross apps classroom at what 10 30. So, any questions? So, I'll wind off. We'll continue on Monday then.